If you are struggling to hit an MLB The Show 23, this is the video that's going to help you. Regardless if you're a new player or you're returning from MLB 22 to 23, and you're just having a hard time with the adjustments made to batting in this year's game, I'm going to walk you through all of what I would consider the best tips, especially for beginner players, to help you make those adjustments to start getting on track. If you guys enjoy the content, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. All right, let's fix that swing. All right, so first things first, we need to go over the settings. Now, as always with MLB The Show 23, a lot of this is going to come down to personal preference. It is the one game, in my opinion, that has the most amount of control and individuality when it comes to settings, especially online when competing against other players than possibly any other online sports video game. However, like I said, if you are newer to the game or you are just really struggling at the plate this year, these are the settings that I would recommend, and then I'm going to show you how to implement them in your gameplay. So we will start first with the swing input. Again, this is going to be for the newer players. You want to use buttons. You do not want to use analog analog flick or analog stride, those are going to make it way more difficult online than their counterparts. Now, if you're playing Road to the Show or franchise or whatever, and you enjoy the realism or the feel of analog stride or analog flick, by all means, go ahead. But online, you really need to use buttons. This is going to make it the easiest of the three by far. When it comes to the hitting interface, there are some people that will say directional can help you out. But really, when you start competing against other players online, whether it be events or ranked, you really need to use zone. This is going to allow for the most control when it comes to not only getting the bat on the ball, but also placing where the ball is fired off at off the bat. All right, next up is PCI Anchor. Now, there are two options here, or you can completely turn it off. I would 100% be using PCI Anchor. I believe it was brought into the game in MLB 22. Now, the preset option will give you the nine static locations on the screen that you can click on, and it will lock your PCI in place. So let's say you're having a hard time by hitting pitches up in the zone. You can't get there quick enough. Someone's giving you the high heat, and you want to give yourself a little bit of help by setting your PC up higher so that you can actually catch up to it. Now in game, what it'll look like is this, the nine options here that you can choose. So let's say, you know, you're having a hard time hitting the up and in pitch. You can set your PCI there and it will set the bat right there from the start. Now you notice on that last pitch, he was up and in. And it, even with the up and in preset, it was still off of the bat. Now, obviously with Mike Trout, he's still going to absolutely hammer this thing. But when you get up in higher difficulties, you're probably still going to not square that up. So to go one step further is in the PCI anchor, if you choose free, it will allow you to select anywhere in the hitting zone. So if you go into PCI Anchor and you choose free, it will allow you to select anywhere in the strike zone. So we're going to try that one more time. Now you go all the way up, up and in. You're in Hall of Fame. You're having a heck of a time. Someone is just peppering you with up and in fastballs. All right. You click right there and look how up and in this actual PCI placement is. You don't even have to move. All right. This is going to significantly improve. Just this one setting alone will significantly improve your ability to hit the meta pitches. You are going to see a lot of the same type of pitches, whether it be the fastball up and in, maybe the sinker down at the knees. You are able to, with the free PCI anchor, allow you to just go all the way to those options and click it in. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this every single time. I mean, being that extreme with up and in or, or, low and in but when you start seeing those players that just fire the same pitch in the same location and you just simply can't catch up to it or lay off of it this is going to alleviate a lot of that issue all right now let's talk about the pci i would recommend going with the new setting of the bat all right so if you take a look at my pci currently you'll notice that i've got a bat icon on the screen and some players will find that a little too much going on and make it actually more difficult because there's just more stuff in the way and i totally understand that so this is going to be personal preference i just enjoy the look of the bat and i just it feels more comfortable for me but that's going to be all up to you if you're not going to use the bat i would just leave it at basic but again uh, that's just going to be up to you that'll be you could use the three dots like what it normally is but i don't know the bat icon for me for the inner pci or for the center pci has been fantastic now on to the inner if you're going to use the bat you might as well use basic this is going to show you the inside kind of brackets for you now this is going to be dictated by the hitters contact rating all right so the hitters contact against lefties and righties depending on what you're facing that is going to increase or decrease the size of the inner pci this is going to increase the size of essentially how large the region is that will actually allow you to get a hit which is why once you get into hall of fame or even legend difficulty players that have really high power but low contact rating are almost completely useless 
because of how fast the ball actually moves and goes in those higher difficulties, you really need players with the highest amount of contact because it increases the inner PCI size. Now again, you can go Fishbowl or you can go Starfighter. I'll show you what Starfighter looks like and you'll see that it's just got those weird changes, the bracket shape. But again, that's all going to be personal preference for you. If you're using the bat center PCI, I would just leave it at basic. And then the last one that you want to worry about is the PCI outer. Now this is going to be the size of the PCI outer is going to be dictated by by the vision stat of the player. Now this isn't going to help you get hits, but it is going to allow you to foul off the ball better. The higher vision stat Obviously, the bigger the outer PCI, which allows you to just get your bat on the ball even if you miss on that inner PCI sweet spot. This is a lot less important, and I think, again, it comes down to having less stuff on the screen, in my opinion. So, usually, I just leave this completely off. Again, it's totally up to you, but I just like the look of the inner and the bat PCI look. Lastly, you can change the color. I like magenta, and then the transparency, I leave at about 70 the fade out, this is going to be when the pitcher goes to pitch, what stays on the screen. I like just having the bat icon because again, like I mentioned earlier, personal preference, I like having less clutter on the screen and which is why I like having the bat as my inner PCI because when everything disappears, I just think it looks a little bit better than having just the inner, let's say, from the prior games. So I fade out the inner and outer PCI. So watch when you go, you'll notice it now. I've got the inner PCI and the bat and then you notice it just completely disappears when he goes to pitch. All right, now that we've got that done, we've got all of the PCI settings and everything that you need for that, let's talk about camera. If you are trying to get better at MLB The Show 23, whether it be you're just an offline player, you're struggling to even get hits on veteran, or you're trying to get into ranked or events and you can't beat anyone, there's really only two, two hitting views that I would recommend getting used to, and they might be an adjustment for some, but it is Strike Zone and Strike Zone 2. And again, the reason for it is because you get to focus entirely on the ball. When you go to strike zone three or something that's even farther back when you can actually see the full player it's just more stuff on the screen and harder for you to actually concentrate on it so i'll show you strike zone three and as you can see i've got the entire player my entire batter out and again this is going to be personal preference but it's just harder because everything is a little bit smaller for you to see so on strike zone one it's going to be very zoomed in and for some people this will be extremely difficult especially if you are having a hard time leaving breaking balls in the dirt if you're having a hard time laying off those breaking pitches in the dirt, strike zone one can be a little difficult because it's a little tough to tell early on when pitches go way down out of the zone. So again, that might be a little bit of an adjustment. But as you can see here, like all you've got is the pitcher and the ball as your focus. And I'm going to go over some cues and things that will help you as a hitter so that you can utilize this view a little bit more. I personally really enjoy strike zone two because it's not as zoomed in. And again, you get most of the focus on the pitcher and the ball. But again, this is going to be personal preference. I would start with strike zone two unless, you know, you're just having a hard time with all of it and you can really get used to strike zone one quickly but those are the two that i would recommend all right now let's talk about the types of swings that you can do so there are a couple options for you you can go contact by hitting circle or b you can go power by hitting square or X, depending on the console you're on. Or you can go just normal by hitting X or A. I would use personally normal swings the entire time because that doesn't change your PCI or your power or anything like that. So if you swing with a power swing, it will shrink your inner PCI. So again, I'll show you what it looks like right now by swinging normal. As you can see, the piece inner PCI is pretty big. Now I'll show you what it looks like by hitting square. And you can see that it's just much smaller in the bottom left. I would always just use normal swings when it comes to online. The only time that I would go with a power swing is when you have a moment that you just can't complete. Let's say you have to hit a home run or extra base hits with Jackie Robinson. He usually has a really low power rating in game and you just can't do it. That is when I would recommend just using power swings. But online, I would just stay away from it. Just use normal swings. You can hit jacks and moonshots with that. You don't need to always be hitting square. I honestly wouldn't do it at all in an online game. All right, now I'm going to be real with you, okay? You can watch a ton of hitting videos online from other creators and you know they might have some really unique tips for it but i'm gonna be completely honest with you i can't teach you how to see the ball and move your thumb any better there's really no way to do that personally but what i can do is help you read the information the game will give you to then utilize and change some things up that will make your deficiencies at the plate a little bit easier so the first one 
would be if you slam your PCI. This is a famous one. So I'll show you what it looks like. You're following the ball, and then right as you swing, you know, you drop the PCI. It falls out of the bottom. It happens all the time. You see a lot of that. Um, I do it personally. So it'd be like at the last second, you drop your PCI, and it comes way out of the zone. And this will happen a ton when you get pitches right down the middle. And I don't know what it is about the brain or your hands or what it is, but it's very, very frustrating because usually it happens on very easy pitches to hit. If you are always dropping your PCI, what I would recommend you do is go full claw on the left thumbstick. For, any, for anyone that doesn't know what the claw movement was, this is like if you were playing Halo MLG back in 2008. You take your index finger and your thumb, and you use that on the left thumbstick. So instead of using just your thumb, you're using, you're using your index finger and your thumb to control it. Why I think this will help you out, especially if you are dropping your PCI, is what you'll notice when you first start doing it, your hand really doesn't allow you to slam it all the way out of the zone. So it just makes it a little bit easier to hold your bat in the zone. Even if you wanted to stretch all the way out, it's a lot more difficult to do it in the last split second than it is when you've just got your thumb as the you know free motion entirely. Again, this might be a little awkward for some people early on, but it's really helped me out once I actually started using it because, again, I don't make those drastic PCI movements when I'm just using my free thumb. Now, this next tip was easily my best and most well-received hitting tip from last year's game and it really doesn't change at all in MLB 23. Now this is going to require the strike zone hitting view and this is only going to be necessary on newer players and you are having a extremely difficult time laying off pitches that are outside of the strike zone that are left and right of the strike zone. This is going to help you potentially more than any other tip that I can give you. So we'll go to the strike zone view and I'll show you why you need it. I called this method last year the crossover method. Now, as you can see with the strike zone view, the hitter is lined up perfectly in the center of the PCI, the center of the strike zone. Now, as you notice with strike zone as the hitting view, that the pitcher is lined up perfectly with the center of the strike zone. So watch as he pitches way inside what happens. Notice how when we watch that back, I'm going to let him throw it again. Watch how early the ball crosses in front of the pitcher's body. So what I want you to do, this is going to be extremely difficult for some to get used to, but I swear, again, like I mentioned earlier, I can't control where your thumb goes. This is going to help you lay off the pitches that are way inside and way outside. So what I want you to do is not worry about going left or right with your PCI at all. Just simply up and down, and this method will take away your inability to have to move it left and right, which causes a lot of struggles. So watch again. When the ball comes out of his hand and it crosses the pitcher, it does so extremely early. Now that's on pitches that are on the inside. If they cross over the pitcher very early, you know that it is going to be on the inside part of the plate, or it's just going to be way outside of the zone on the inside. A bad pitch, one that you're not going to be able to square up now when he pitches on the outside it's not going to cross over the pitcher at all and most of the time you're unless you are very good at placing the ball and timing an outside pitch you're really not going to be able to do anything with an outside pitch even if it is in the strike zone it's okay to take strikes especially when it isn't your pitch now what i want you to do is zone out and on the first split second he releases the pitch don't look at the ball this is what is going to sound and feel extremely weird, but follow me here. If you focus on the pitcher and solely notice when the ball crosses over the pitcher, it will allow you to square up pitches that are in the middle of the plate. Again, this is for beginner players. If you are having a hard time laying off pitches that are on the outside or inside of the strike zone, which are going to be tougher to hit, or they're just completely in the inside or outside of the zone, this is going to help you at least make swings on pitches that are actually good to hit. Now watch when he throws one in the middle. Again, pay attention and zone out on the pitcher, and the ball will cross over a few frames after he throws it. Why this is so helpful is, again, when it's going to be on the inside, it's going to be almost immediate that he crosses over the pitcher, and when it's on the outside, the ball won't cross over the pitcher at all when you're using the strike zone view. Just like that. All right, so the last thing I want to take a look at is just, again, I want to touch on some of the attributes 
Okay, because I think that with newer players, it's a little overwhelming. And you might not know what any of these attributes do, so I just want to go over it quickly. Contact against righties and lefties is pretty self-explanatory. At 125 on both, the inner PCI is at its largest. So the, the area in which that you can actually hit the ball and get a decent hit with is at its highest at 125. For power, that is going to, again, when you actually get it on that inner PCI, how much oomph is behind it, okay? Now, early on, if you're playing on veteran or all-star, you're not getting into Hall of Fame or legend in ranked seasons, let's say, or events. Having players that have really high power is more important because a home run, if you're not getting a lot of hits, you might as well go for the few hits that can change the game. But as you get into the higher difficulties, having players that have really high contact, even though they don't have a lot of power, is still going to be valuable because as the difficulty increases, PCIs shrink in size and you really need those players with high contact. Next up is vision. That is going to control that outer PCI, your ability to foul balls off. So it misses the inner PCI, but you get a portion of it because you, your outer Outer PCI is very large. That'll allow you to keep the at-bats alive. It's not as important, obviously, as contact or power because a foul ball isn't going to get you any runs. It's going to at least just keep the at-bat alive. The next one I want to talk about is clutch. Now, clutch in MLB 23 is extremely important, and I feel like a lot of returning players that don't know this or newer players are going to completely overlook this entirely. The clutch attribute is very, very important this year. When you have runners in scoring position, which is on third or second base, the clutch rating replaces your contact rating, meaning that if you have someone with 125 contact against righties and lefties, but you have someone with 80 clutch, when that batter comes up and he's got a runner on second or third, his contact now goes all the way down to what his clutch rating is. So keep that in mind. It's very important to take a look at. Obviously, the bunt stats are self-explanatory. It's how well you can bunt the ball. And those are the ones that you want to pay attention to when it comes to hitting. Lastly, guys, don't just get locked into attributes of players. Okay, I want to give you a perfect example. I've been going through the programs and trying to complete a lot of the team affinities and things like that. You're going to find some cards that you just absolutely mash with. And I feel like a lot of players, especially if you're newer to MLB, you're going to get zoned in to whatever the highest rating is. This Kyle Seeger, for example, only has 79 power against righties and lefties, but I'm absolutely demolishing the ball with him. I also hit far better with lefties than I do righties. But again, that's all going to come into your personal preference and no hitting tips video can help you with that. That's only going to come with repetitions and figuring out what you succeed with, which is what makes MLB The Show so much fun when it comes to your lineup construction. So after about 20 games of ranked, or if you're just playing offline, that doesn't matter either, take a look at your lineup. You might have a really high overall 99 player that you're batting 100 with, but an 89 that you're batting 700 with. Pay attention to that because everyone's swing is different and some swings are just simply better for you. So guys, I hope this helps out. Let me know in the comments section down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.